Hey y'all, this is the chapter 11.1 notes. Um, we're going to start talking about gases now. So this is where we start talking about pressure and its units. Pressure is one of those things we haven't yet talked about. We have talked about a couple of others. We've talked about volume before and we've talked about temperature. But pressure is kind of a new thing to us, so let's talk. Pressure is the force per unit area on a surface. It can be found by taking force and dividing by area. Now, you take your force, which is generally in newtons, divided by whatever area you're using, so meter squared, centimeter squared, yard squared, and you just divide those two. In um, System International, the pressure is expressed in pascals, or PA. Now you'll see this is one of four pressure units. One of four. There are four that we use pretty commonly in uh, chemistry. Now a pascal, just like a joule, is very small, so in many cases we tend to use kilopascals, or KPAs. Keep that in mind. Make sure you filled in those notes. Pause the video at any time that you need to. This is just a little visual to kind of show you what pressure, force, and area look like. Now, this came from your book. This is a picture of a lady doing ballet or dance. And if you look at her feet, the force is continually the same in each picture because her mass never change, changes and the force of gravity on her body never changes. But her contact, her feet with the ground, at the beginning it's 325 centimeters squared. Then she goes up on point. So only her toes are touching. So that's 13 centimeters squared area. And then when she lifts her leg, it drops again to 6.5, or half of 13. To find pressure on her feet, or the pressure she, she's exerting on her feet, you take her force, 500 newtons, over that area. And you see at the beginning, she's ex, uh, exerting 1.5 newtons per centimeter squared. In the second one, when she goes up on point, it goes way up. The force is being distributed only over 13 squared centimeters, so it's 38.5. Then when she lifts one leg, that's a massive amount of pressure on that one toe, or one foot I should say, up to 77 newtons per centimeter squared. All right. So we just mathematically found force over um, area to find those given pressures. But how do we test pressures of gases? Well, a barometer is the way we test atmospheric pressure. You'll hear them talk about the barometer in the morning. You'll hear them talk about uh, what the atmospheric pressure is. It was invented by a gentleman with the last name of Torricelli, and that's important because we use his last name, the Tor part, as a unit of um, as a unit for pressure. Now, he developed this very, very simple instrument to measure atmospheric pressure, which is helpful because as pressures change, you can tell that the weather's about to change. You can study more about that if you like, but how he did this is with just a tube containing mercury and the atmosphere just pushes down on it. It's measured in millimeters of mercury. This was what the original barometers look like. If you look at this, this was the original. This is the idea. The atmosphere is pressing down on this little pool of mercury, which drives it up this tube. Okay? So the mercury is forced down by the 760 millimeters of mercury. Sorry, not 760. It's just pressed down by the atmosphere and it drives it up the column. This is what a regular barometer looks like, and again, measured in millimeters of mercury. But what if I don't care about atmospheric pressure? What if I have a gas stuck in some sort of container, and I want to test that? Well, to test an enclosed gas, we use something called a manometer, not a manometer, a manometer, or a U-tube. People call it a U-tube. So you have this gas in here. And again, we're going to use millimeters of mercury. Well, before the valve is opened, this mercury is even. When I open it, 
if the pressure inside the bulb is greater than atmospheric, it's going to push that mercury away, okay? Because the atmospheric pressure is pushing on the outside of the tube. But if the atmosphere, sorry, if the atmospheric pressure is lower, it would drive the mercury the other direction, okay? So how do we measure it? Well, to find the pressure of the gas, you take the pressure of the atmosphere and add the height, okay? Take the pressure of the atmosphere and add the height. All right, so you need to just look that over before we go on to this problem and see what you can find. You need to make sure you have that written down, highlighted, whatever you do. So let's try it. This open-ended manometer containing mercury is connected to a container of gas. What's the pressure pressure of the enclosed gas if the mercury arm mercury in the arm is attached to the gas is 15.4 millimeters higher than the one open to the atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure is 745. So right here we have 745 millimeters pushing down. So whatever's in here must be less than 745 because it's driving it this way. So my height here is going to be negative. It's going to be negative because it went back to the left. Negative height is when it goes to the left. Positive height goes to the right. So how do we find the pressure of a gas? Well, it's atmospheric plus the height. Well, since it's moving to the left, we have to subtract 15.4 millimeters. When you subtract that, you should get 729.6 millimeters of mercury is the pressure of that enclosed gas. Millimeters mercury, close enough. 729. Now, had it gone the other direction, had the pr uh, pressure inside the tube pushed to the right, then you know that, that pressure inside there is higher than atmospheric, so you would just add 15.4 to it. But it went back to the left, so it's got to be less than the atmospheric pressure. Okay? So we have talked about Pascal's. I've mentioned tors. We've talked about millimeters of mercury, and long ago we talked about atmospheres. Atmospheres are kind of my favorite because it's very simple. I can understand it. There's one atmosphere if you're at sea level and the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. One atmosphere is pushing down on you. And one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And one millimeter of mercury is the same as one tor. So one atmosphere is also equal to 760 tor. And then if I want to talk in kilopascals, one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascals, or KPAs. Now, guys, all of these are equal to each other. So you're going to see here in a minute that you use these conversion factors to switch between pressures. I can use any pressure I choose, but you'll see here in gas laws that your pressures just have to be in the same unit. So let's look at part A. We need to solve these questions. I have 0 0.830 atmospheres up in Denver, less than that one atmosphere. I want to, in A, switch that to millimeters of mercury. So in part A, I need to remember that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So you can set this up or just think through it. If I'm going from 830 atmosphere, the smaller of the two, to millimeters of mercury, I'm going to multiply or divide by 760. Well, if you're still not sure, set up with your given. Tee it up. And put your one atmosphere on the bottom so your units will cancel. And your 760 millimeters of mercury on top. So when you multiply that out, divide by 1 if you want, you should see that that comes out to 631, when I round, millimeters of mercury. All right? So make sure you've got that down. I'm about to clear this and do the kilopascals. Pause if you need time to write it all down.
Okay, so here on part B, I'm going to switch it over from atmosphere. No. Atmospheres. And I'm going to go to kilopascals. So remember, from a minute ago, one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascals. So here I'm going to have to multiply by 101.3. Because if I set up my T-chart so that they cancel... 101.3 kilopascals is on top, so I would end up multiplying those numbers. So multiply it out. Let me know what you get. You should have come up with 84.1, and that's kilopascals. All right, hopefully you understand that. I've got two more, or one more slide, and then you're free to go work on your homework. So here we're going to talk about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, which hopefully you have wrote this down. This is already in your definitions. But I do need you to write down the formula. So if I have a balloon, and it's made up of, all, of just air, I've got a bunch of gases in there. I've got some oxygen, I've got some hydrogen, I've got some CO2, I've got some nitrogen. Now, when I go to find my pressure, of air. Well, air is a mixture of all those things. I've got to know the partial pressure of oxygen. I've got to know the partial pressure of CO2. I've got, that's a two. I've got to know the partial pressure of nitrogen and of hydrogen if it's in the air. So here's the thing, guys. On your practice, if you're given partial pressures, you just add them up to find the total pressure. If you're given total pressure and one partial pressure, you got to subtract. Hopefully you figure that out, but if not, come see me. Just try. Think about what I've written here. Think about this equation and try, okay? Your homework is homework set 11-1. Number three is extra credit. The rest is due, okay? Best of luck, guys.